This is the true definition of a parabola. A special curve shaped like an arc. Any point on the parabola that is an equal distance from a fixed point called the focus and a straight line called the directrix. How does it look visually? I don't have to draw an X and a Y axis. I'm just gonna draw a parabola. Here's the vertex, that's called the vertex. Everyone knows that. This is called the focus. And we'll talk about why it's called the focus in a little bit. And then this is called the directrix. Just like the visual that you have. Now, what does it mean by equal distance? Equal distance just means it's the same distance. So if I go from here to here, that distance in green, technically, look, obviously I drew it really crappy. That distance in green, should be the same distance as, what do you want to call that color? This color, beige, orange. <laughs> They're way off. Take, oh, look, there it is, not to scale. And I'm gonna do this, toot, toot. That means they're both the same distance. Yeah, Does that mean, and that's all it means. By the way, sometimes they call every point on the parabola a locus. Can I write what? Oh, she's in here? We're trying to get in? Yeah. Well, yeah, and so it's messed up. Sorry, guys. Everybody makes mistakes. Okay. I don't know where I got that from. Where did I get that from? From you guys? Hannah Montana? Hannah Montana. All right. Uh, sorry that my graph is not drawn to scale, but that's all it means. Every point is equal distant from the focus as it is to a directrix. And that's what it says here. So, and we're gonna use a hack. Now, before I continue, we gotta know a few basic stuff about parabolas. So hopefully you know this much. Y equals, if it opens up or down, this is called vertex form. And you already know that, where HK is a vertex. But this one you may not know because a long time ago, a teacher told you, not that it's her fault, a teacher told you that if you have a function that opens in the x direction, that that's not a function. And that's a lie. I mean, I guess technique, well, okay. They tell you for a reason, actually. I'll tell you later on. Uh, it's the truth, but it's uh, also a lie at the same time. And we can have a debate on that. Where the HK is a parabola, oh, HK is a parabola. HK is a vertex still. And this one the opens either left or right. Opens left or right, this one opens up or down. Opens up or down, depending on whether A is positive or negative. Don't worry, I'm gonna put all the different expressions here on the side. If it opens up, and I'm just gonna draw a generic graph, that is like Y equals X squared. If it opens down, that is like Y equals negative X squared. If it opens to the right, and I'm gonna slow down guys. If it opens to the right like that, that is like X equals Y squared. And if it opens to the left, that is like X equals negative Y squared. The concept's pretty much the same. And don't worry, I'm gonna help you and I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a whole bunch. Now, you guys ready? Okay, 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 we're good, we're good. What? Oh, is this really good stuff? So this in quotes, is supposed to be you guys asking questions. So you're probably thinking, all right, Travis, how is this gonna help me open up a bank account? Well, it's not, it's not gonna help you open up a bank account. But, uh, but, it's, but it's actually, open up, opening up a bank account is a lot easier than this. Because all you got to do is give the bank an information and you get it done. This requires a lot of information, like a lot more. And not just your name and social security number. By the way, never give out your social security number to anyone, guys. Ever, 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 unless you're applying for credit or a home mortgage or an auto loan. Uh, that's the fastest way to get identity theft. And we don't want that to happen to you. Okay, where was I at? Um, we can get an equation from knowing the focus and directrix. And I know when you were in Algebra 2, all you did was, here's the equation graph, here's the equation graph, and that's okay. But now that we are in dual credit college algebra, 
they're going to ask for the directrix and they're going to ask for the focus. Why do they call it a focus? Let me tell you why, guys. Yeah, it's because it, everything is focused on that. So if I have a point, if I have a point and that's called a focus, it's because if I have rays of light coming in parallel, they're all going to focus on that. Can you think of an application of where this would be probably pretty important? Yeah, the dish, the dishes. Do you notice the dishes have a node coming out of them? That node is the focus. Isn't that cool? And now, and now we're learning just about that. Dishes on the house, like, remember? Okay, yeah, okay. So that's why this is important if you're wondering like why, like no, it's not gonna help you open up a bank account, but if you become a super awesome engineer, <laughs> okay, happy face because we're all doing pretty happy in life. Uh, all right, so now let's get, let's start talking about stuff. So look, it says here, if we know the focus and directors, we can calculate the p-value. And you're like, Travis, I have no idea. Where are you throwing all this crap p-value? What is p-value? UT Austin calls it the c-value. All right, different universities call it different things. Let me tell you what the p-value is. The p-value is a distance between the vertex and the focus. It's like a hack. P-value. Let me tell you why. The, di the distance between the vertex and the focus is technically the shortest distance. And remember, remember that we said that the, it should, the definition of a parabola is that it's equal distance to the focus that is this, as it is to the directrix. Well, then that distance, I go down, look, I didn't draw it to scale, I can already see. That's the same distance as this, and I'm gonna put two dots, two lines on it to indicate they're the same distance. Do you guys see that? And then that's all you gotta know. And after that, you can figure out all the questions. And don't worry, I'm gonna give you guys lots of examples, a lot of them. Yes, and guess what? Guess what else we should know? that kind of is common sense, but not really sometimes. The focus and the vertex always lie on the same line, regardless of how it opens up. If it, like if it opens upward, the focus and the vertex are gonna lie on the X equals whatever that line of symmetry is. If it opens to the left, it's gonna be a horizontal line of whatever the, you know, like the, of whatever that, whole, that line of symmetry is. Does that make sense? So write it down somewhere, put focus and vertex, always lie on line of symmetry. Focus and vertex always lie on line of symmetry. All right, I'm gonna go real slow guys, here we go. Example one, you guys ready for this example? The focus is at eight negative one. This is a focus, not a vertex. So circle that number. And the directrix is at y equals three. Which direction does the parabola open? Where is the vertex? And what is the p-value? So they're asking us three questions. If you hear wind, guys, it's not like anyone passing gas. It's uh, the air coming through the window. So, all right. Uh, sorry, YouTube. I hope you don't give it a thumbs down because you heard that. Um, anyways, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put these two points because that's all I know. 8, negative 1. So I'm going to go to 8, negative 1. I'm going to call that the focus. I'm going to put a capital F. That stands for focus. And I'm going to draw my directrix with a green dashed line at y equals 3. I'm going to say y equals 3 is right here. Usually the letter they use is a L. What do you call that? Cursive lowercase L? Okay. So here we go. Where is my vertex? Well, the vertex, remember, so here's what we have to use. And I'm gonna wait for everyone to catch up because I can tell that I'm getting too fast and too excited. So check this out, guys. We don't even need that much brain power. We just need a little bit. All we gotta know is the word equal distant. We told you that the vertex better be equal distant to the vertex as the vertex is to the directrix, right? So all we do is we find the vertical displacement and divide by two. So let's see, if this point is at eight negative one and this has a Y value of three, 
that means the distance is four and four divided by two is, so that two value, that's not where the point is at, that's the P value. Put P equals two. That point, which is the vertex, is located where, Mata? It's still at eight, but what's the Y value? We have to go up two from negative one. Yeah, one, perfect. The vertex is at eight, one. Does it open up, down, left, or right? Well, it opened up down, perfect. You guys got it. It opened up down because you got the, you got the directrix up above and you got the focus down. Wherever the directrix is at, and the folk, wherever the direction the focus is at, that's the direction, and there it is. There's my parabola. Do they ask for the equation? No, they don't. Don't worry, I'm gonna teach you how to do that also, but they're not asking for that here. So let's answer the question. Which direction does the parabola open? Opens down. So there's the first question. Question two, where is the vertex? Vertex is at eight negative one. Oh, sorry, eight one, eight one, eight one, eight one. You don't have to say that, you can just say eight one. And then the third question, what is the P value? Two. Whatever the vertical displacement is divided by two, and that's gonna be your P value. Always, don't worry, we're gonna do some more. Shav, there are many parts where I am confused. I'm going to go slower, miss. Sorry, there's an announcement. All right, little Anna, where are you confused? Um, I don't really understand how you found out which side it opens. And also, why is the vertex at a one when like the answer we got was a two? The P value is a two. The P value is the distance from the vertex to the focus or the distance from the vertex to the directrix, the shortest distance. And that value is a two. Now, how do we know what direction it opens? I'm gonna illustrate it over here, guys. So oh, I don't have much room. Uh, I'll put it right here. So if I have this, so here's my directrix and don't, don't write this down, just listen. If here's my directrix and I have my focus up above, then that means that the vertex is in the middle and it opens up. Does that make sense, Anna? I'm gonna give you more scenarios. If I have a directrix, so there's my directrix, and I have a focus in the bottom of the directrix, then that means my vertex is in the middle and it opens down. Does that make sense? So it just depends on the point, on the focus point where it lies with the directrix? Perfect, so you tell me, look, I'm drawing a directrix, notice that this time it's vertical, and look, I'm putting the focus on the right-hand side. Which way is it gonna it'll open? Op it'll open on the right. Perfect, perfect. And the focus is gonna be halfway between the distance of the focus and the directrix. So all we did literally so, is just count. And so half of two. two being one. Correct, half of, uh, where am I doing it? Half of, uh, half of, uh, let's see, the distance, okay, so this point up here, the Y value is three. Who cares about the X value? If you wanna care about it, it's eight, eight, three for the point there. That point is on the directrix. And the point on the focus is eight, negative one. So the distance between three and negative one, I'm just looking at the Y values. The distance is four. Divide that by two, and that's always gonna be your P value. Because you use the P value to find your vertex. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, we're gonna give you more practice. Don't worry, we're not gonna throw you to the wolves. Is that even a thing? Okay, sorry. All right, here we go. The focus is at one, three, and I have a directrix at negative seven. So I'm gonna draw, it doesn't have to be perfect. X equals negative seven. I'm gonna say negative seven is right here. You don't have to do the sound effects. There it is. And then my focus is at one, three. So I'm gonna go to one, Oh, did I do a mistake? No, no mistake so far. One, three, point. Oh, there's gonna be a big one. Which way does it open? It opens to the right. Let's find the p-value. So count, look, this value here is a one. This value here is a negative seven. What is the distance between negative seven and one? Eight, and what's eight divided by two? 
So the p-value is four. Does everyone understand how we got the p-value of four? Yeah, uh, the p-value, you see this distance that I just drew with the, with, the, with the blue line? It depends how you're oriented. So to figure out that distance in blue line, all I did was this. The absolute value of negative seven minus one. And then whatever that is, divide by two. And that's how you get your p-value. I'm pretty sure Delta Math has a formula, but I'm trying Shouldn't to do the p-value be uh, negative? No, the p-value is always positive. Uh, it's just it's just the distance between the focus and the center, or between the center be, between the focus and the vertex, or the vertex and the directrix. I'm taking the difference negative seven minus one to find. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. You guys ready? Uh, I haven't plotted the vertex yet. I know that the vertex is four away from one three. So go four to the left, and I'm going to put my point right there. What is that point? Perfect. Negative three comma three. And this one, the bigger the bigger the p, the fatter the fatter the matrix. Remember, that's supposed to be the vertex there. Travis, do we have to do it perfect? No, you do not have to do it perfect. Here we go. Uh, what else do they want? Oh, that's it. We already answered all the questions. One, where direction does it open? Opens what? Opens right. Two, where is the vertex? Negative three, three. Three, what is the p-value? Four. The p-value is never negative because it's just a distance. Now the coefficient, your a, will be. All right. And then it says, all right, Chavez, I guess that helps with knowing how the parabola opens and stuff. But what about if they ask me to write an equation of a parabola? Hey, I got you. Look, I put it right here. This is supposed to be you guys asking. I got you, miss. Okay, I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> yeah, there's my script. Yes, ask. This equation will tell you what your A is. Here's the, you know, here's the typical vertex form. The y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. Since I haven't done any real work right now yet. All right, you guys ready? So here we go, guys. A parabola can be drawn given a focus of five, six and a directors of y equals two. What is the equation of parabola? Now they want my equation. Here we go. I'm gonna draw first the focus and directrix. Here we go. I draw my sketch, five, six. I'm gonna put a point. I'm gonna say this is five, six. The directrix is as y equals two. And don't worry, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to say y equals two is this green dotted line. And I'm going to call that L. I already know, and I'll, I'll slow down. I know that my vertex is going to lie somewhere on this pinkish line right in the middle. The green line has a y value of two. The red point, the focus has a y value of six. That distance is, and four divided by two is, so the p value is two. Write that down where I need it. Where is my vertex at? Go two down from five, six. Five, four. Now that you know that the vertex, I'm gonna call it B. Now that you know that the vertex is at five, four, I can write this. Y equals A, parenthesis, X minus five, close it, put a squared, plus four. That's just the equation in vertex form. All we are missing is what? The A. They gave me a nice little formula. Here's my formula. A equals one over four P. Do I have a P value? There it is. So I'm gonna say A equals one over four times two. So I get one eighth, I rewrite it. It opens upwards. I know that it's gonna look like this. So I don't have to put a negative or anything. And I'm gonna write one eighth X minus five, close it squared plus four. Huh? <laughs> Why are there so many questions? Cause I wanna give you the best education possible. I just, I just had like a clarifying thing. Yeah. So 
if we're given the y equals equation, then you're going to be subtracting the focus specifically from the y value. But if it's the x equals equation, then you're going to be subtracting the p value specifically from the x value. Uh, I think I understood you, yes. Yeah, I, the okay. way you're thinking, yes. Uh, so get your displacement, your horizontal displacement and find where the vertex is at. Yes, ma'am. We're about to do another one. Don't worry, we're gonna finish pretty quick. A parabola can be drawn given a focus of one negative seven and the directrix y equals one. What is the equation of the parabola? And I did this one on purpose, so check it out. One negative seven, I have a point down here. That's a, fo that's a focus. And then the directrix y equals one, so way up here. Which way is it opening, up or down? Down. So let's find this vertex. So this has a y value of one. This has a valid y value of negative seven. The distance between that point, the vertical distance or the vertical displacement between negative seven and one is eight. What's eight divided by two? So the p value is four. I'm gonna go four down. You can go four down from the directrix or you can go four up from the focus. It does not matter. I'm gonna put that point right smack in the middle. And that point is one comma negative what? There it is. And it opens downward. So here is my, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's your parabola. Here's your equation. And I'm, I'm gonna slow down guys. Is everyone okay so far? Recognize that it opens downward. So what am I gonna put in front of the A? A what? A negative. Let's find the A value. A equals one over four P. P is four, so what's four times four? So Y equals a negative one over 16, X minus one squared minus three. The only reason we put a negative is because it opens downward. Do we get it? No, well, hold on. <laughs> we got to, yeah. That way you guys don't get confused. What if the parabola opens left to right? All right, I got you again. Let's do this. A parabola can be drawn with a focus at negative six one. So negative six one point, that's my focus. And a directrix at x equals negative two. So let me put it in here. You don't have to do the sound effects. My horizontal displacement, so let's see. This is a negative two, that's a negative six. What's the distance between negative two and negative six? Four and four divided by two. So the p-value is two. Perfect. And then just go two to the right, just like Anna said. If you're following the focus two to the right or you're doing the directive two to the left, it doesn't matter. That point is gonna be right smack in the middle. And what point, what coordinate is that gonna be? Negative four comma one. Does it open left or right? It opens left. Because it opens left, perfect. It's going to be a negative. Here we go. I'm going to write x equals negative a, parenthesis. Remember, it's y minus k. y minus, what is the k value? 1 squared minus 4. If you plug in a y value of 1, you get an x value of negative 4. No, the X value is negative here. That goes on the outside. You're thinking of uh, if it opens up or down. So scroll all the way up to the very top and notice what I have right here. Look at the H. Yes. H and K flip guys. Now that I know that, and I know that A is gonna be negative, here we go, I'm gonna calculate A. A is equal to one over four times two. And you know, it seems like one eighth is a popular number nowadays. So there it is. X equals a negative one eighth. Y minus one squared minus four. And sure, if you plug in a Y value of one, you get an X value of negative four. So we're perfect right now. Cool or not cool guys? All right.
we're almost done. Uh, let's do some more practice. It's just one more, and then we're just answering uh, little little questions on how to complete the square with a number in front besides one, besides a equals one. A parabola can be drawn given the focus. So here it is. And the wind's mad today. 10, 3. And the x equals negative 4. <laughs> so I'm sorry, janitor. Everything's flying today, guys. This is x equals negative 4. I'm going to call that L. So let's see. The x, the horizontal displacement between negative 4 and 10, that is uh, 14, right? 14, and what's 14 divided by 2? So the p-value is 7. Are you getting it, Munoz? So now that I know that the p-value is 7, I can go 7 to the left of 10, and that's going to put me right at 3. So that is 3, comma 3. And is, is it open up, uh, left or right? It opens right. So here it is. X equals some A value, a positive A value. And since I have 3 and 3, no fun here on this one. X minus 3 equals it squared plus 3. Oh, yep. Look, I had just I just fixed that mistake earlier, and there I am putting an X. Y minus 3, guys. All right. My A value, finally, we have an A value that's besides 8. 1, or the denominator 8, times 4 times 7. What's that? 7 times 4? 28, no? 7, 14, 28. So here it is. It's all good. 1 over 28, y minus 3 squared plus 3. Yay, we're winning, guys. Okay, now let's do just do general questions so we can complete everything. And then you guys are free to do both delta and uh, find the vertex of the parabola. And look, there it is. Do not use the calculator, guys. They want you guys to do it without a calculator, this one. So I'm assuming this exam will probably not have a calculator session because it is that easy. Uh, so here it is. You want it to look like this. Because the HK is the vertex. So. You're going to group these two, move the 5, just like we did before. x squared plus 10x, leave some space there, put a plus symbol. It's always going to be plus something. And then there's my plus 5. 10 divided by 2, and I'll slow down. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 squared. So I put 25 there, but that's magic. So how do I balance it? I subtract. So then here's my equation now. X plus 5 squared minus 20. What's my vertex? Negative 5 comma negative 20. Don't worry. We're going to be done in two minutes because that's all we have. We just have three questions left. The example, this example, find the vertex for the parabola, negative one third x squared plus four x minus 10. All right, I need to make this look like this, guys. So this is the first time you guys have had something that's besides a one. Now you have a negative one third in there. No, don't worry, it's not gonna be that hard, trust me. All you gotta do, well look, there's nothing in front of that x, it's a one. So you take these two numbers, just the first two, the ones that have x's, and you factor out whatever's in front of that x squared. So here it is. And don't worry, I'm going to go real slow. I'm factoring out the negative one third. So when I do that, I'm going to have x squared and then change this sign, that plus to a minus. Minus, and the way you figure out how many times one third goes into four, multiply the denominator, which is a three. Or in this case, I have a one third, so that's why it's a three. Three times four. What's three times four? So put a 12x right there. Leave it alone, put a plus with some space, and put minus 10. And I'm going to slow down. And before I continue, does it make sense to everyone what I did there? No? Okay. Check it out. If you were to distribute this, negative one-third times x squared, do you get a negative one-third x squared? If I were to distribute that negative one-third times a negative 12x, do you get a positive 4x? There it is. So you can see what I did. If you have a number for, for your quiz in a little bit, that is not a one third, but it's a fraction like two thirds, do the reciprocal, do the reciprocal. 
Okay, now for, to complete the square, that's the easy part. I take the middle number and I do what? Okay, and, and perfect, good job Munoz. So I put plus 36 there. Now what you really did, be careful, I already see some of you writing minus 36 in the back. What you really did, look, you have a one third down here. Negative one third times 36 is not 36. Negative one third times the positive 36, that is a negative 12. So to balance it, you gotta put a positive 12. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, now we're finally ready. Here's my equation. Negative one third x squared. Oh, no, no, no. I'm completing the squared. x minus six, close it, squared plus two. The vertex is six, two. Everyone see how we did it, guys? Okay, don't worry. These questions are gonna be fast. These are gonna be real fast. Look how simple they are. Uh, so here is the questions that your online quiz has uh, through your canvas. The focal point of the quadratic is located where? Well, look at this. They don't give you a, a hard equation. I know that this graph is, yes. Focal point is the same thing as focus. Sorry, I should have said that. That is the same thing as this. It's actually a lot better than that, but all right, let me draw that. Here is your A. Do we have a formula that can get that I can get the p value from the from that? I do. I do. A equals one over four p, right? So I'm just going to write 1 over 12 equals 1 over 4p. And you can just go 4p equals 12. What did I do next to get the p-value? What's the p-value? 12 by 4. Perfect. What does the p-value of 3 mean? That multiplied by 2 is Yeah, but this is the distance from the focus to the vertex three. You're talking about the distance from the focus to the directrix because you said times two. So this is your distance, guys. Is the focus above the vertex or below the vertex? Above. above. I'm just going to go three points up. Everyone should know where this point is at. Look, that is at zero, negative 10. Travis, how'd you know that? Because if I plug in a zero in here, I get a y value of negative 10. Right, Mata, or no? Okay, I'll slow down. Where, where did I lose you? Oh, okay. Uh, do you see how I have one over 12 x squared? Do you agree that that was your a? Oh, okay. P, the p equals three means it's the distance between the focus and the vertex. Yes, sir, do you agree with that? Perfect. Here is my vertex at zero, negative 10. Oh, because any type you have a parabola, just that they just give you a squared minus a constant. The axis of symmetry is the y axis. Because this minus 10, all it makes it do is go up or down. I'll, I'll write it here. y equals ax squared plus c. That c just makes it move up or down. The a is a 1 over 12. Yeah, it makes the problem go fat. It doesn't make it move left or right. Cool? Okay. I'm gonna move three points up from negative 10. Where's that gonna be at? There it is, that's the focus, zero, negative seven. Cool or not cool, guys? Last one. Don't worry, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm not gonna write anything. That's right, I did it on purpose. Yes. Um, 
Yes, because zero negative 10 is my vertex. Yes. Now the next example, don't worry, it's the last one, miss. Are we okay so far or no, Mata? The last example, it wants to know where L is located at. What does L stand for? The directrix. I know the directrix is down here in blue. What is that line? Where is that line? It's three down from the vertex, perfect. So where is that at then? Negative 13. Do you see how we did it? All right, everyone come back. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Uh, okay, I was into it. I was 